was good everybody it's your boy jimmy james 59 and i have a video that is has a theme that's a little bit different than something i've done in the past this is kind of a quasi build order and also quasi thinking about strategy kind of video um one of the things that i try to do is read works of strategy so you know, I've recently, uh, you know, read uh, Caesar's Conquest of Gaul, and right now I'm currently in the middle of reading Machiavelli's Art of War. He he did write an Art of War, right? Number of people throughout history have written a sort of Art of War book, and so I was reading his Art of War, and in it he actually spends a lot of time, or he spends the the characters that are engaged in a dialogue in that video spend a decent amount of time talking about uh, what at that time right the you know essentially the italian army right uh looks like and there's a lot of comparisons to to rome and the really uh and the sort of the rome in the time of uh, especially of caesar a lot of in fact there's a lot of references to caesar's conquest of gaul and his exploits there in machiavelli's work and so Reading Machiavelli, one of the things that really catches me in his book is he actually, when he's describing the sort of ancient Roman army and, you know, kind of how he thinks battles should be conducted, uh, you know, in the sort of proper way, uh, one of the things that's really striking is that it actually did kind of remind me a little bit of the uh, the Italians in, uh, in Age of Empires 2 in some ways. And, uh, and it just got me thinking, you know, when I played this game, I was thinking about that uh, that video. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. It's kind of a, a loose, uh, it's kind of a loose uh, reflection on that. But also in terms of ways you can play the Italians in this game, um, not just in this particular game, but in general. So I felt like this particular game I played had a lot of a lot of lessons. And so you know, Italians are classified as an archer civilization in Age of Empires II. However, I think that one of the things people started to realize a lot more about them is that they're actually a lot more versatile than that. You have fully upgraded Hussars, you have Cavaliers that get all the upgrades and you're only missing the, the uh, Paladin upgrade. And, you know, you have some alright Swordsman line and you have the Condottiero as a unique unit. And so you have a lot of options. You have hand cannoneers, uh, the Genoese crossbowman's really interesting, you know, fully upgraded arbalists that actually you can get a bit of extra armor on. So Italians are pretty versatile, right? And just the question I think sometimes is what to do with all that versatility. If we take a look at this game, right? Um, we could start off with, uh, we start off with the opponents and then we'll talk about, uh, you know, my team and my teammates. Uh, so, so and we have the Hindustanis in the red. Now, a little bit more to say about them here in a moment. And then we have the Persians in the in the yellow. And we can see right our Persian player going ahead, Loring and Deer. Taking a look at my teammate, uh, uh, King Nath, playing as the Huns. And you can see for myself, I'm playing as the Italians, as uh, initially discussed as we ping the Hindustanis. Let's ping the Hindustanis uh, once again because the Hindustanis are actually a pretty versatile sieve these days as well. You have camels that are the envy of uh, most other civilizations. You have the Ghulam unique unit which can be used to counter archers. And then you have hand cannoneers in Imperial Age that are very strong counter to infantry units because they can get to extra range. And they have extra armor as well, so you have some very difficult to counter options from the Hindustanis. And as an archer player, right, when we have two civilizations that have really good cavalry, this is a game we actually spent a lot of time discussing strategy and, you know, what we should go for and that kind of thing. Because I think you could uh, argue that we have a much more... You know, how might you might stay meta sort of setup in that, you know, Italians in team games tend to play primarily out like an archer civilization. Huns tend to play like a cavalry civilization. 
And yet our opponents have some civilizations that can actually be quite vexing because it'd be very easy for the Persian player to go knights and allow the Hindustani player to go for some other kind of unit. Maybe go cav archers, maybe go for Ghulam to counter the, uh, the archer player directly. And on the other hand, right, the Hindustani player could go for camels and then the Persian player could... You know, maybe go for, you know, also maybe go for, like, knights, but possibly even go for something like trash bow play, which would be really interesting. And Persians do get cavalry archers that are only missing Bracer in the late game, so it's not, you know, it can... It's an interesting civilization, right? So, um, one of the, one of the things that we're talking a lot about is exactly how should we... How should we tackle this, right? As you can see, right, with Italians getting up to the next age, pretty pretty quick uptime here. Uh, this was a, a 20 pop uptime. And uh, again, I've done a number of videos on going uh, 20 pop with uh, with archers. Italians are a civilization that can can do that fairly, uh, fairly, fairly uh, confidently as well. And so that's why I think they're kind of an underrated uh, team game pick uh, in the uh, in the archer rule. And what we're trying to do here is trying to figure out what our opponent's going for. And one of the things that we can look at, right, is we see some villages on stone. Is our opponent's really taking a very much of a walling sort of approach? Who's that scout? Sloppy play for me. Well, this could mean a Gulam play that we're going to run into. Is our opponent very diligently, right, buttons up that base and is playing quite the defensive approach. Now, if we go, go down in the south here, right, we have... We have our Persian player opening scouts, which is something that you know you could you would probably probably expect, right? So we're uh, but the thing is, right? You know, we're kind of trying to figure figure this out for for ourselves, right? So we have the, the scout here running about from red, trying to figure out what's going on. Meanwhile, right, we're just trying to get walled up at home ourselves, right? So you can see, right, the walls are. Coming up, and uh, we're also massing archers. I uh, don't have fletching just yet, but should I think sometime we should get in the neighborhood of that. And this is a hard one, right? Because Hindustanis can be such a wild card when it comes to matchups, right? As you can see, everybody's kind of getting walled up. So this game right now is playing out fairly meta, except for the fact, right, that the Hindustanis. Are just playing an extremely extremely defensive opening right um this makes some sense because you know it'd be pretty easy to counter all in scouts from my base just make a spearman or two and the archers should be able to overwhelm and without knights right um on my side of the map which the hindustani player is on he's always gonna have right if he goes camels well archers are gonna counter that fairly well too so uh he's in a bit of a situation but uh, it's a very versatile, right? You see a nice, nice takedown from from Nate there. And well, we have some spearmen forward. We have some scouts hanging out, as you can see, right? Kind of trying to crack things open. So, right again, this is kind of a meditation on team games as well. And one of the things that I'm, you know, doing here and asking, like, hey, you know, what's what's yellow going for? And he's okay. Uh, cavalry is ooh, hole in the wall, right? Very, very good. Looks like uh, Nate's going to get in here. That's a nice fight for him. He's going to go in and get some damage. He's doing pretty well. He's fighting. So, right, we don't know what the Hindustani player is exactly going for. And the problem with Hindustani is, right, if he's going camels, then, you know, that could be a unit that really uh, can take out our player in green. And we want to keep him alive. But if he's going Ghulams, then I might not be able to support that. So we got to figure that out. And Nate is really holding it down, getting a lot of kills, right? Getting a lot of kills here and I'm gonna sacrifice the scouts a little bit but well he's got he's is he gonna get a second one there all right he gets a second one right so he gets two kills there did lose his army um it's quite a big army to lose right meanwhile right tower goes up to defend this area this is actually a really uh some really nice resources we forced because now going to be a bit more difficult for the Hindustani player to boom, and if he wants to go for Gulam, um, which is what 
at this point in the game, I'm kind of expecting, since I haven't seen any scouts from our red player, well, now, you know, we're going to slow that down just a bit. So that's what I'm trying to do. Now, this table's going to, uh, is, it was an interesting choice here because, uh, I was, uh, I think you'll, I think here in a minute I go up to try and find damage here and I see a stable, so I am thinking camels. As you can see, right, Nath is, uh, you know, he's a bit, little, little late on, uh, double bit X there, but, uh, uh, but, you know, he's getting his upgrades, and, you know, we're just trying to find damage right now, keep him, keep him pinned in, you can see that it's a, it's a pretty even game at the moment, right, is, meanwhile, right, from our player in the yellow, we're seeing triple ranges, is this triple ranges? Yeah, triple ranges, wow. Now, a little Spearman doing his thing. No worries, no worries, right? And I gotta say, one of the things that's really impressed me about Red, right? Not very much LTC time. He's playing a bit more of a defensive approach, so it's not surprising. He's gonna have not that much LTC time. Now, this is where we see the stable. So, this is one of these moments where it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, if we're seeing a stable, that means some kind of camel play, we might suspect. So... So I start to get a little, uh, a little nervous, but you can see that we are on the way up to Castle Age. Uh, not a bad uh, idle time either for our, uh, for, uh, for our, uh, development here. So we're in a pretty good spot. We haven't gotten pressured really just yet. Now, right, we're just trying to break in, cause some havoc, right? Cause some havoc for the moment. Hmm, this is, right, normally with armies, you really want to fight together. Um, we're, uh... We're taking it a bit. Uh, we're taking a bit of a one v one approach up here, as you can see right now. We're going around trying to find a little bit more, a uh, little bit more damage. Getting that upgrade backed off from there just a little bit, thinking maybe we can try and find some damage elsewhere. And some a re really nice job, right? That our my teammate did on. On our opponent here, who's making some archers, which is a really interesting choice, actually. Getting clutching is up to the next stage, though. Maybe just making some archers to fend off these scouts. And you can see red is up to castle age. Well, he's mining some stone. He goes for a siege workshop first, right? Really interesting choice in him. Right, you can see, right? We're up to the next age as well. And well, now we're just getting our upgrades in and we're proceeding. Break and do some damage. So far, right? Pretty, uh. Pretty decent game, and now we see it, right? Now we see the castle. Right now, I don't think I see the castle yet, but those of us here in, uh. Ooh, that's pure at Town I always hate to do that. Yeah, it's very jarring. Right? We don't know about it just yet, but it's going up. Not a lot of way for us to get through. And this is a great moment in the game, right? This is where we start moving together. Say, hey, Nate, bring your scouts in. We just want to go find out what's going on, right? So you can see Nate, right? Say, hey, hey, don't worry about the uh, don't worry about the scorpion. Just scout this guy out. We want to see what's going on. This is where we see the mining camp, right? Now we're really starting to think, oh, okay, what are we, what have we, what have we got here? We didn't see the castle at this point, so don't know particularly and this is kind of a debate here because you know what we've seen another stable right we saw him try to make a stable before so right Nate's gonna bring another army in but gonna get the damage on it right so we don't know in fact we're not really aware that ghoulums are uh potentially on the way in fact we stopped making them yet anyways so we're gonna keep making archers given the fact that we have no idea now meanwhile right Back to the ranch. Take a look at our yellow player. Is going for cavalry archers. And you know what? He's got Bodkin coming in. He's trying to get cavalry archers up. Cavalry archers are a really nice counter to knights. Really nice counter. Um, now, for Persians, that's going to fall off dramatically in the Imperial Age. But, for the moment, you know, like in Castle Age, Actually, not bad. I need more village just getting that up. But again, a lot going on. And at this point, it's like, hey, let's break in. Because again, we haven't found out very much, right? 
We don't really know what's going on in the space. And the thing is, we haven't seen any cavalry, even though we know right now that Gulam are being created. This is a situation where it's like, hey, this, let's go in, see if we've broken in. Let's go see what we can find. And uh, I'm going to let my teammate right go in there, go inside, and let's see what we can see. And at this point, right, it is now it's obvious. We see the flag. We see the units. Okay, right back off. Now we know it's too long time. So this is a really, this is a really tricky situation, I think, um, because we see camels and gulam, and both of those units counter the units we're making, but it's coming from just one civilization, right? So we're going to keep making crossbows here because it, it's at this point in the game when it's like, well, if he's on gulam, you got to start thinking about the end game, here, right? And it's like, well, now let's go over to the Cav player, even though we know he's on Cavalry Archers, which is, that's something that my Civ can fight against. And Italians are really nice in this spot because you get Ballistics cheaper as well. And so that's something to really keep in mind here. So now we're getting Thumb Ring as well, and now we're trying to do damage. And now we're just trying to do damage, go inside, and now we're teaming up, and... Yes, even though we have a, a lot of archers, right? Even though there's Gulam out there, you can see the Gulam start to come down. I notice these guys only have the one Pierce armor right now, so not as uh, as baffling of a unit at this point. Let's just right. You can see we're we're not trying to get trapped in here. That's something a little worried about. And you can see right, we've gotten some good bill kills here already. We see the Gulam. And we're able to one-shot these Gulams. So let's just go right. We take this fight. Pay attention to the numbers here. You know, we don't really lose a terrible amount of archers here because we have the numbers. So honestly, right, we're okay. Not a not a bad play here. Our opponents are not in the best of situation, right? They don't have a lot of military, and uh and you know, we have quite a few. And we're getting some kills here. Again, we have our Right, we have uh, you know, a lot of crossbows here. Right? So crossbows looking good. We're able to take out Gulam pretty easily. Ballistics, Thumb Ring. I think Thumb Ring is really crucial if you're playing archers and you're up against Gulam. Thumb Ring is really crucial for just trying to whittle down their numbers before they get you. Uh, and, uh... No. <laughs> I think this guy, right, he's... Uh, he's... I don't want to GG at this point, but he's feeling confident, man. He's feeling confident this game, and so I uh, because he's got a he's got a great sieve. Um, you know. Meanwhile, this buddy's in kind of a difficult, difficult spot here. We're just you know we're just keeping him down because we know that the red player's on Gulam because he's got the castle up here. We can't do a ton of damage to him, so. For us, it really is just all about getting our getting our damage. So that's what we're gonna try and do. Cav archers, right? It's got about eight of them. Again, we have a lot of crossbows. You know, we could go in here, right? You know, but again, there's really no point in getting this army trapped, especially when we don't know the status of the gulam, how many there are in the field. We want to be careful. So we're just going to go go around, try and find some damage elsewhere. Could have clicked inside here. I don't know if we ever do, actually. We see a Siege Workshop coming up, so that can be kind of a problem. I'm telling you, Thumb Ring makes such a difference on your, uh, on your archers. Big difference. We're really whittling down this house. Uh, meanwhile, right, this is kind of a mistake here, us not fighting together, and... Uh, not having plus two armor here makes so those knights really vulnerable to cavalry archers. But we're gonna go in, right? As you can see, plus two armor is coming in for the Gulamas for our uh, player in the red. See the siege workshop. Uh, we're gonna try and get one vill. Boom, perfect. We get a little something out of this, and uh, and yeah, we're just gonna go back. We could have kept, we could have stayed in there, but we may have risked losing our army. I don't know what Y means here, but that's... Maybe that's okay. I'm not sure what the reference is. 
also we're getting plus two coming in for our knights there from Nay. Now we're trying to see the Gulam numbers stack up just a little bit, but we're on our way up to Imperial Age. Now notice, right? Not making any more crossbowmen. There's actually a really, really good reason for this. Um, you can see, hmm, eating a mangonel shot a little late there. I think my teammate had to tell me that about that. Mm, eating another shot there. Right? Losing a lot. This is really, really, really sloppy gameplay for myself. Now we're being chased down by the Gulam. This is exactly the position you don't want to be in because by hit and running, you're going to let these mangonels get to you, right? So, um, my buddy's going to come here, help me out a little bit. But at this point, right, we're saving our resources up. We're getting infantry upgrades. The plan here is to transition to the combat hero, right? And that's where some of this inspiration for Machiavelli's army comes from. Because one of the things that's really interesting that Machiavelli says... Uh, in the art of war is that he's he kind of uh, idolizes right this the, the sort of the Roman uh, legion and how it you know and how fighting with sword and shield is really like the the way to go and he even says some things to the effect of you know that you know you fight with a sword and shield and that way you can absorb projectiles as they as they come in right and uh, and I just thought gosh that sounds just like the Condottiero in Age of Empires 2 and it kind of does have this sort of Roman legionary sort of look to it so uh so we're going to try and, you know, we're going to try to get to that. And he, uh, you know, this is a conversation they had amongst themselves, right? Where, uh, where Red's saying that he's on the way up to Imperial Age, right? So he's, you know, see, trying to call the GG, right? Look at these guys right here. You know? And, uh, something about the, something about my base here, um, <laughs> this is so funny, man. I, I, yeah, I think I get the basic idea of what they're uh, what they're getting into, right? This is kind of a mistake for me showing the uh, the condos here. But again, so why is Condottiero a good choice here up against Hindustanis? The reason it's a good choice is because the Hindustanis counter to infantry is the hand cannon, right? However, the Condottiero absorbs the damage from hand cannons, so. It's actually a really effective unit. It's gonna it's gonna do really well against camels, and it's gonna do really well against gulams. And Hindustanis don't have a an easy to mass unit. Uh, this little guy is gonna look how brave he is. Oh, look at him, he lives. Um, you know, Hindustani is probably up against Kondo's. I think heavy cav archer is about the best unit you can make. He is going for the Scorpions, but one of the things about Kondos, and if you take a look, right, they're very quick, um, and they also train very quickly as well, so they're a great power spike. You can see we already have about 30 of them, right? We have so many, we're getting cows, man. Um, so, as you can see, right, Nathan's going to come in, right, do a little bit of damage, and what we're doing right now is we're just waiting for Bombard Cannons to come out so that that way we can attack this castle. No sense fighting under it, right? We don't have the Pavis technology, but we could get an extra Pierce Armor on these guys. And this is a tough unit right now for for a civ like Hindustanis to stop. We've already done a lot of damage to Yellow in Yellow, right? He's in the uh, he's still in the Castle Age, so we're not really worried about him right now. And we're just gonna go Kondo, and we see the Gulams are still being made. Heavy Camel, right, as well. And we're gonna see how well this army. Bears, now we've got like Skulums make they create so fast here, right? And right, we have bombard cannons coming out. And now, right, let's just, you know, we're just gonna group our forces back up. Take a little bit of damage. I think Scorpion's a really nice play, actually. But again, this is why we this is why we went for bombard cannons instead of trebs. So that way we can snipe scorpions, right? So that's that's the, the purpose behind this. We can snipe scorpions, we can snipe siege. So that's not really going to be our worry here, right? And now we have this army, and we're just cranking out units at this point, guys. We're just cranking out units. We should still be making vills, um, and well, as soon as I say it, we start doing it. But uh, but yeah, we need to be making vills, and here's and here's a fight, right? We have a we have our bombard cannons uh, right here, and he's gonna try and go in, snipe these, um, see how many. He 
they're gonna get some damage on these bombard cannons, but um, you know what? The castle's gonna go down, and right, we've still got a lot of condos here. And so as you can see, right, the Gulam get shredded kind of hard by the condos. And note, right, hand cannons are not an option for Hindustanis here. It's right? not gonna be an option. So we're gonna defeat that army pretty easily. Heavy camels are not going to be a great option either because the condos are pretty strong, right? Now we're getting blast harness so we can get our attack. And we just have. We just have so many. Yeah. I'm talking a little bit about the, uh, the condo hero right here. Now, right? Again, getting a lot of kills done. You can see, right, that this game is at this point. Really is, uh, really is firmly under control for us. And, uh, we see the GG come in, right? And they just go ahead and they call it. So, look at that. 70 condos created. And that was, that was created very, very fast. Um, so that, right? And so this is, this is exactly, uh, you know, this right here. Let's just go back to the map, right? Uh, just hide this for a moment, right? This, right, these guys right here, this is Machiavelli's army, guys, right? This is a, a, exactly what he is, uh, uh, what he was advocating for, right? It's sword and shield, and just absorb projectiles as you, as you go in, and so, uh, uh, so anyways, right, um, that's why, uh, it, it worked in this game, and, you know, and Hindu songs are a civilization that a lot of, uh, a lot of people are struggling to play against right now, and so, um, Italians are a civ, I think that actually match up fairly well with Hindustanis between Condottieri and, and Genoese Crossbow. So and if you're out there, you're scared to death of Hindustanis, uh, you know, randoming against them on the ladder, uh, well, you could always just sieve pick Italians and you'll have a pretty strong uh, sieve to go up against them. That's something that you, uh, you know, if you're anxious about that. But um, that being said, right, um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this, you know, kind of a different video, thinking more about, a uh, little more about, uh, you know, strategy uh less about build orders and sometimes you know in 2v2 games you really have to uh you have to improvise a little bit in matchups and uh we got kind of a non-meta matchup against us so we had to uh we had to improvise as well so anyways hope you enjoyed the video and uh and let me know in the comment section of some if you have any uh, any thoughts about uh the italians and dustanis or, or you know gosh even you know uh uh, military history that kind of thing so with that being said uh, i'll catch you guys in the next one see you out on the ladder james 59 peace